When it comes to Darwin, we did absolutely uh, misunderstand survival of the fittest. Fitness is just your ability to reproduce. So this idea that you had to be the biggest and the strongest and the meanest in order to succeed, it's not what Darwin meant at all. Survival of the fittest and its misconstrual has been extremely harmful. The idea was used as a political platform to justify and to rally people, to have people feel threatened and to have them agree to things that when you look at history, you cannot understand how people would have agreed we see it in eugenics, the eugenics policies. We can see it now in how we are dealing with the pandemic. The idea that because it affects uh, people who are elderly, then maybe that's just the natural law. The way that survival of the fittest as it's being interpreted in to be the alpha male will make you the most successful is not actually how it goes. It doesn't go that way in nature and it doesn't go that way in the corporate environment as well. So what people don't understand is that it's actually very costly to be the alpha male. It can be incredibly stressful. You're always looking over your shoulder. Chimpanzees are famous for being quite friendly and social, but they also have a darker side. They kill each other and they do it systematically. Bonobos have never been seen to kill another bonobo. What is it about their psychology that allows them to be that way? We know that bonobos evolved south of the Congo River, and we think that's because they were isolated. They actually were able to form friendships, especially females could form friendships in a way that chimpanzee females could not. They lived in a richer environment and it was easier to hang out and share food and raise babies together. And because they were friends, they don't put up with male aggression. So you have males no longer being selected for this aggressiveness, but instead friendliness wins the day. The friendliest males were the ones that had the most offspring because the females preferred them. If any male bonobo starts acting like a chimpanzee, the females will join together and sort of correct him. We would be so much better off if we could learn from the bonobos. Even more than bonobos, I think that we, the homo sapiens, are the best example of what survival of the friendliest is because we existed with at least four other human species in the last 100,000 years. And so what was it that allowed us to succeed? And the usual answer is, oh, we were smarter, we had bigger brains. None of those things are true because over the years we found that Neanderthals, they had brains that were at least as big as ours. They had culture, they had a similar technology, they were stronger. How come they're all dead? So we think it must have been something else. So then we started to look at morphological traits that are associated in other species with selection for friendliness. And we found evidence for those in our own species in the last 50,000 years that basically humans have uh, friendly faces. We have shorter faces, narrower faces. We don't have these giant brow ridges that other human species have. Those are all traits that you would expect if we had experienced uh, selection for friendliness. So we're the friendliest species that evolved. We recognize complete strangers as potential group mates. As long as they have a marker of identity, we all kind of agree on uh, within our group, uh, whether it's an accent or something we wear, or maybe even how we prepare food. But the flip side of this is that when we feel that our group is threatened by an outside group, we are able to be extremely violent and cruel towards them. We almost do not see them as human. So then the question is, how do we immunize ourselves to prevent that off switch from going off? And I think there's a couple of things we can do. 
The first is to celebrate democracy with all her flaws. And the second thing is to help facilitate friendships across different groups, to allow people to sort of wake up from uh, dehumanizing ways and rehumanize and see everyone as equal.